Okay. So this block is a little bit more experimental and it is going to push you out of your comfort zones and hopefully you're going to learn a lot of new things. Um, today we're going to be doing preparing sketchbook backgrounds because a lot of the work that we've done so far we've done all on plain backgrounds but it is good to try and work into like pre-coloured backgrounds sometimes, but they don't just have to be like a wash, they could be all sorts of different things. Um, these techniques that I'm going to show you don't have to be used for backgrounds, they could be used to create an abstract art piece. Um, but the way we're going to do them today is we're just going to do the um, soft muted colours on some of the pages on our sketchbook so that we can then add things on top and so it's just like a background so we don't want it to be too you know too intense um but i'll show you some of the the techniques and i think that they're really effective so the first thing um, that we're going to do is wallpaper printing so you're going to get a sheet of acetate or it could be anything um i'm thinking for jenny she could use like you could use a baking tray or you could use any flat surface that you can put glue on and then you're going to get your roller and then you're going to roll your pva out so this is just usual normal pva there's nothing particularly special about it and then you're going to get your wallpaper, so your anaglyptor wallpaper, and you're going to put your PVA over the top like that. And then I'm just going to let that go a little bit tacky. And I'm going to try a different one. Some work better than others, so that's why I said to get a few different ones. And then... I'll try this one. I really like the more intricate ones, like my personal preference is these, thank you, these floral ones, um, because you can work back into them and I'll show you that in a second as well. So we just kind of want the, the PVA to go over the raised areas. We don't want to put too much on, so thinking about the amount and rolling it a few times so it's even. Then once you've done that, Think about where you're going to position your wallpaper print. So where do you want the pattern to be? So if we're thinking about these being backgrounds, it's nice to have it kind of along corners and borders and edges. So you might think, actually, now that I've done that, I want to reshape it a little bit. And I might put it down here. And you are just going to push it on, nice firm pressure. You want to make sure you don't lose position because sometimes it can slide when you, you push it on and then you lift it up and because of the lighting, the lighting's really good and bright there, you can see the print. So we're going to leave that, it's not, it's not finished by any means um, and whilst that's drying and becoming a little bit more tacky, I might do a little bit more up here. See the print there i don't think that's come out as well here because the, the circles aren't as defined so i would probably have another go at that if i was if i was doing this myself and then this one i'm going to go vertical so we, we usually go vertical or horizontal rather than kind of diagonal in art because that makes things feel more balanced if you want to you can actually use your roller it is going to put glue on the back but that doesn't matter if you're not using it for anything else. I think this one should come out quite nice. There we go. Probably could have used a little bit more glue on that one. I might just actually try it with a little bit more glue because I think this one is going to be a really nice one. So it's a little bit of trial and error. Um, so have a little play with it. There's no, no pressure with this at all. So let's see the difference now with a bit more glue, what that makes. And notice this time it hasn't had a few seconds to dry and become tacky. And you can see now that's a lot more defined than that. Same positioning but it's 
it's hard it's hard to see I isn't it you but see, <laughs> you can just about see it, it. Yeah. we're lucky because we've got really bright lighting but normally it's an absolute nightmare to see so now that i've done that can you guess what i'm going to do next yes, Wash over. yes. so anna linkies are great because <coughs> they're super bright so they're like inks a cross between inks oh. and watercolor um, but I know I said to bring watercolours because yeah. they're a bit softer. So um, you're not going to get like as as bright colours, which is good for a background. Um, so then it's still a little bit damp, really. So I'm doing this sooner than I should do. But as soon as you put that on, can you mm -hmm. see how mm -hmm. it resists? What a nice line of blue. Thanks. Now I'm going to go for um, Anna Linky because they are a bit more intense. As I say, a bit too intense for a background, but for demonstration purposes um, to show you how clear it is. Oh, wow. Can you see how now, as it's developing and developing and developing, and that's going to keep developing, and resisting against the PVA. So this is a PVA resist print, basically, is what this is. So people talk about printmaking, um, and you always think, oh, you've got to have specialist equipment to do it. But this is just glue, PVA printmaking. Um, so yeah, it's really, really fun. Then once you've done that, and you've worked into it now, I have got wider brushes. All oh, right, sorry. <laughs> I've gone into the light a bit. Um, once you once you've gone over it with different colours, some of these are a bit bright for a background, but just as I say for demonstration purposes. Um, then you can work back into it afterwards to make it a little bit more, um, a little bit more defined, and to make some areas a bit more into focal points. You can see that's not you can't see it as much now up there. As you can down here because the colour's softer. Um, so, as I say, it is a little bit of trial and error, playing with your colours, seeing what works. So that works a lot better with a darker blue now. But yeah, as I say, you can work back into it. So you can get some darker colours, and you can start to enhance and go over some of the bits to accentuate and what I really love is where the leaves are is to work back around some of those leaf shapes in the negative space around it now that seems like a really strong outline so I'm just going to use a little bit of water and blend it out a little bit goes a long way with Annalinky Oh, you're painting in the in the negatives in the spaces, in the spaces yeah. not so on top so of color. i can't paint really on top of the glue like the, because it resists yeah. yeah so because the glue is like a resist I'm, I'm having to paint in the negative spaces around it where there's where there isn't any glue but that's quite nice because it's making those leaf shapes nice stand mm -hmm. out and actually I've done whole massive A1 paintings like this with just beautiful um, floral wallpapers that have been printed into the background. And you you would think that I'd maybe painted all the leaves by hand, but it's not, it's this, that it's just wallpaper prints. But now you can see some of those shapes a lot more clearly and it doesn't take too much precision you know I'm doing it quite lightly quite quickly but I probably wouldn't do that the whole way across I might just keep that in a corner so that there's a corner of like leaf shapes and then it kind of blends out into this kind of patchy and then I might have like a drawer in or something there do you see what I mean um, but as I say if you wanted to you could make it a whole abstract piece um, based on that so um, yeah it's really fun. And then the other thing that I was going to show you 